Hi all, Andy from Solar Reviews here and this is our 2023 top solar home energy storage battery solutions. Home energy storage and battery solutions have been the hot topic probably in the last 12 months in the solar industry. At RE Plus in September 2022, I literally saw, I would guess, maybe 50 home energy storage and battery related solutions that I didn't see three years ago before COVID at the same conference. And so what we thought it was worth doing is coming up with a list of the top seven. Uh, we weren't sure top five, top seven, but in the end, there were sort of seven that stood out in an individual group. And really what they stood out for is that all of the companies were what I would consider bankable. So my apologies to the other solar battery and home energy storage solution providers that aren't on the list. These are the ones I thought are the most bankable. All of these companies are either profitable or they're part of a very large profitable corporate group. To start from number seven, we have Canadian Solar, a new product on the market, just being released at RE Plus in September 22, is the EP Cube. It's a 10 kilowatt lithium ion phosphate battery solution with an integrated battery inverter. Topography of it is, you know, similar to the other big solutions like Powerwall, where you've got the electronics and the battery effectively all in one or two boxes. Probably the advantage of the Canadian one is it, it does have that bit of scalability and for some people a 10 kilowatt or a 20 kilowatt is just the right size. If you're wondering what size battery you do need, jump on Solar Reviews, um, click on Solar Calculator or even click the estimator on the front page of the site and then select how you want to size your battery and that'll give you an idea of what size battery you need. So there's one thing that's probably not well known is that different homes need different sizes and so in the question when obviously people always ask us you know what's the best solar battery solution while there are traits of better and worse battery solutions really it does depend on what size you need because there's no point paying for a 13 and a half kilowatt solution if you're never going to have enough solar to charge that fully anyway at number seven the canadian ep cube uh, 10 kilowatt can jump up to 20. Positives, 7.6 continuous power out point, which is probably at the upper end of most. As I say, lithium phosphate battery technology. Profitable, well-known company, been around listed uh, on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, one of the two, and been profitable for a number of years. Has an app that you can use similar to Powerwall or something. Allows for load shifting, you know, to have the battery charged at off-peak times with cheap power, which is another one of the key functionality items you're looking for in these sort of solutions. What weighs it down? It's new. Also, the other thing, as I'd say, there's not a lot of details from Canadian about where the electronics in it came from, whether they've partnered with another battery inverter manufacturer. They haven't released those details to the market yet. So that would make me a little hesitant to buy it. Personally, I have in another company I'm involved with a lot of history with their modules, but will they understand the extra support necessary once they get into power electronics, once they're selling battery inverters and batteries? I think that's a slightly different business than selling models. And so I'd be a little worried about it and that's probably why it's at the bottom end of our top seven. At number six, we've got another new product, probably the best known brand in the world in batteries. And that's the Panasonic Evervolt 2. A positive of this, it's a 17.5 kilowatt solution if that's roughly what you need and how much excess solar power you might have to store or if that's the amount you might need to store to get through a night of the whole peak time if you like in your home, that could be the right size for you so if that is it's a positive obviously 9.6 kilowatts continuous peak power which is really really high another positive is lithium phosphate i probably am not enough of an expert really to be giving a strong opinion on whether lithium phosphate, both Canadian and Panasonic use the first two solutions on the list is better or worse. However, generally speaking, the consensus seems to be that lithium phosphate is safer, longer lasting and slightly cheaper. And the lithium nickel manganese cobalt batteries that a number of other people use in a sort of Tesla Powerwall and Tesla motor cars have used that battery. Their benefits is a little bit more energy dense, but there are some people that have some safety concerns concerns about them in that they're more likely to overheat or catch fire but that hasn't really been a major problem as far as I know so I probably see it as a slight positive the fact that Panasonic's ever 
involved is lithium ion phosphate, although other people disagree with that. So, and I'm probably not the best person really to, to settle that argument. The other thing about uh, the Panasonic solution, which is a bit cool, is, well, it's got the app. I think all of these on these lists have got a phone app that'll show you, you know, how much power's in your battery and how much you're using, your home's using, things like this. It allows for load shifting. The cool thing about the Panasonic is it's both AC and DC coupled. You can retrofit it to an existing solar system and AC couple with that old existing solar system, but then add new panel capacities and DC couple those. DC coupling is technically more efficient in that you have less lossages because you've got less power conversions in the chain of getting power from your solar panels into your battery and then back out to your home for use at some point, you've only got one conversion. When you've got AC coupled, you've actually got three conversions. You're converting from the solar panel to AC at the grid connect inverter, then the battery inverter, the energy storage system is converting it back to DC to store into your battery. And then when you need to use it, it needs to come out in DC from your battery and be flipped back to AC, which is a type of power your home uses. So the fact that the Panasonic and also the Canadian solution are offering both AC and DC coupling options, I think is, is an advantage. However, again, the only reason the Panasonic probably wouldn't be higher in my list is their version 2.0 is brand new and out. They also haven't said a lot about who's making their in battery inverter in the overall solution. And I'm more worried about inverter electronics typically than what I am about battery cells or about solar panels. Battery cells and solar panels don't have any moving parts. Inverter electronics are much more complex and you only need a little software glitch in something like that for a system not to work. And so the newness of the product, although Panasonic, very reputable company, very profitable, very large group, been in solar a long time, although they outsource the manufacturing of their modules now, still at number six on the list, a very good solution and definitely worth considering. At number five on the list is the Solar Edge home battery. It's been called a few things that used to be called I think storage when you choose to buy a solar system from solar edge you can either go from I think they're called their HD wave or something their standard grid connect inverters which go with their power optimizers so the power optimizers go under each panel and optimize the MPP tracking of each panel, optimize the power output. It comes down to a box on the wall, which looks like a string inverter, which simply does the DC to AC conversion once. That's their standard model. With their home energy storage solution, then you're using their you know home hub inverter and their home battery together. It's a 9.7 kilowatt size, five kilowatts of continuous peak output power, which is not too bad. I mean, it's what, say, the Tesla was, you know, up until the most recent version of the Tesla. That was five, although the Tesla is now seven kilowatts of peak output power. Some advantages, you know, it has an integrated EV charger. Also, it's DC coupled because of the nature of Solar Edge's business and their power optimizers, the fact that the power comes down off the roof still as DC, made a DC coupled solution, you know, make more sense. So they boast quite high round trip efficiencies compared to some of the other more common AC coupled systems that are on the market. So they don't have integration to a generator at this point, but people that are considering this because of the loss of the grid and outages and wildfires and hurricanes and things like that, then the connection with a backup generator is awesome in my view. So the fact that it doesn't have that a bit of a downside, it may well in the future. At number four on our list is the Enphase IQ energy storage system. This is a little bit different. And again, the pro of this is probably if you're an Enphase fan, and many of you watching this will already have solar systems that use the Enphase micro inverters. Enphase micro inverters are a type of inverter where both the DC to AC conversion and the MPP maximum power point optimization of power output happens under each panel. And then there's an AC trunk cable that comes down and plugs into your power system. So given that that is the nature of how their micro inverters work, and they are known as a very good micro inverter company, then it made sense for them to have an AC coupled battery. Another positive 
is it's a lithium phosphate battery, which we tend to like. A core difference is it has a couple of different size modules and it has a really small three kilowatt size module, which may be really attractive for some people because it can give you some battery storage, a very, very small amount of battery storage, literally enough only to run a few lights for an hour or two, or maybe a well pump to pump water if you live in a rural area and you need you know, to be able to pump water to flush your toilet or something like that. A little low cost solution for some people might be really interesting. In the 10 kilowatt IQ energy storage system, then you've got a continuous max power output. I think it's 3.84 kilowatt. So that's at the lower end of the range compared to, you know, some of the other solutions now. As I said, it's AC coupled. It does have load shifting abilities though. So it does have the ability to set the battery to charge at certain times. It and it does have a phone app. And again, as with all these seven companies, Enphase are a very large, profitable company. I think their market cap is something crazy, like 30 or $40 billion now, and their microinverters are very highly regarded. So they do have the advantage over, say, a Canadian Solar or something that they have been in inverter electronics for quite a long time. A little bit newer to batteries, I guess. At number three, you know, we have the Sonnen core battery. Sonnen are a company we really like. Um, they're a German company. They've been at the battery game or I guess the home energy storage game for probably almost longer than anybody else on this list, I would say. They were bought a number of years ago by Royal Dutch Shell. Whilst I don't think their battery unit itself is probably profitable, I'm not 100% sure of that, but I suspect it's probably not. The fact that they're backed by Royal Dutch Shell and that Royal Dutch Shell are such a big energy company and they know over the next 50 years they have to transition out of oil to different energy sources. They were smart enough really early to see that we had to go to renewables because we need power that doesn't pollute the planet but renewables are intermittent and that's why battery storage is so exciting to everybody is it's the missing piece that pulls renewables together. It turns renewables from intermittent, unreliable power sources to what can effectively be base load. And that's why I think everybody in the industry is so excited about energy storage. And it really is getting to the time now with the new Inflation Reduction Act, with you know there being the 30% tax credit back for battery storage now. So you can buy any of these battery solutions and get 30% of the cost off your tax next year. So it really is worth doing them. You know, it's a great thing it gives you backup power. As somebody that's came home to this farm seven or eight years ago before I had batteries, when there'd been a, a grid outage for a couple of days and had to clean up the contents of my freezer all over my kitchen floor, you only need that to happen one or two times to realize that batteries are a really cool thing to have if nothing else. And so back to the Sonnen, 10 or 20 kilowatts. So it's 10 and it's scalable and they can be piggybacked together, I think up to three. So they can go up to 60 kilowatt hours of storage, which if you want to is really big. They're an AC coupled solution, so they're really, like Tesla, they really built themselves to retrofit to you know existing solar systems very easily without having to mess around with that existing solar system. They've done some really good things um, with the Rocky Mountain uh, Power Utility in Utah. One of their dealers, I think they're called maybe ES or ESS maybe. They've done a really cool project where they've attached batteries to almost every solar system. The great thing about it there is it's a utility starting to realize, whilst utilities have generally been against distributed solar panels on roofs everywhere on homes, they realize the power of having energy storage in the home because that energy storage can serve peak loads at peak times and reduce the peak draw on the network in the busiest times of days. So they're using battery storage technology as a means of managing the grid. And this is really what battery storage can do. It can do great things for you as a homeowner and it can give you a return that's okay, like it's not probably as good as just a grid connect system, but then solar system with batteries is heaps cooler because you have that backup power and you know at night you're still running off the solar power you generated in the day. Which in terms of love of your system, I know it's hard to quantify what that's worth, 
but it is worth something like it's really cool like, i don't know anybody that has a battery system that doesn't like having it and so sonnen a very good solution you know high up and doing a lot in the market and really all the time when i've met their people and talked to their dealers about them and their company they're, they're highly regarded people that work for them tend to be really nice people really invested and i really do feel like they're going to try hard to look after their customers you know even if there are some ups and downs and any of these seven solutions will have their ups and downs and the odd phase here or there or something like that. What I was really looking for in all these companies are companies that I feel will support people and support their clients, you know, through the life of owning the product. And so the second solution is the Generac Power Cell, PWR Cell, but pronounced Power Cell. And to be honest, it was a real toss up about whether the Generac Power Cell or the Tesla Powerwall was gonna be our number one solution. Because to be honest, if I had a choice of buying the Generac Power Cell or the Tesla Powerwall, I'd probably buy the Generac Power Cell because it has some more interesting characteristics about it. First of all, it scales between 9 and 18 kilowatts in 3 kilowatt increments. And I really like that. As I say, not everyone needs the 13 and a half kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall. If you're only ever going to have 9 kilowatts of spare solar power or you only ever use 9 kilowatts overnight, there's really no point you having a bigger battery. Well, there, there can be if your predominant focus in buying a battery is the length of time you can run during an outage, how long an outage you can still have power for, then perhaps there is still worthwhile having a bigger battery and you know charging it at off peak off the grid beyond what your solar system is sized for. But generally speaking, you know, you sort of don't want to pay for a heap more battery capacity than what you need. The Generac PWR power cell, 12 kilowatts of maximum instantaneous output, which is much bigger than the Tesla. That's why I think it's more interesting in the world where we're going towards possibly autonomous homes, you know, larger systems and using the grid far less. The fact that it has that big draw, and I, I have a separate Generac power cell review that I'm doing. So I won't go into it too much because I don't want this video to get too long, but feel free to jump in to the individual reviews I do of these individual products. For those of you, I probably should say that don't know Generac's background, Generac have been in backup home power for I think maybe 60 or 70 years. They, I think they have something crazy like a 70% market share in the backup gas-fired um, backup power generators. And so these guys really do know what people need in the event of a power blackout. And they're somewhat unique in that respect. But the other interesting thing about them, you know, as with the Panasonic and the new Canadian solar solution, is that it offers both AC coupling for retrofitting to an existing solar, but also DC coupling. So you can actually have a retrofitted say six kilowatt existing solar system plug into it, but then decide you want another three kilowatts of panels or five kilowatts or whatever, and then you can actually DC couple that at the same time. So you sort of get the best of both worlds. The other thing is obviously Generac being such a big player in gas storage generators, that it has a generator integration and a lot of them don't have generator backup. And so if you're in a residential environment where the power never really goes out very much, it's probably not of much interest. But if you're in a rural area or an area where that you have a lot of fires or storms or regular occurrence, the idea that you can set your home up with a solar system, a battery, and a gas-fired generator really means that you can survive Armageddon like you're good. Your solar is going to keep you going day after day. The grid could be out for a week, the utility could be down for a week. Your solar will keep you going and if ever it's short then you know your gas-fired generator will turn on for a while. Batteries and gas generators together are a really good solution and I actually even think there's a market for that for people that even don't have solar. Although obviously if you're using gas all the time you're not really you know solving environmental issues. The problem with generators, the old gas fire generators, if it's a 10 kVA generator, when it turns on it produces 10 kVA. It doesn't have the smarts to go up and down, but your house might only be using two kilowatts of power at that time. So the fact that it can produce 10, push them all into a battery, if the battery's large enough to take that sort of power and both be powering your house 
and filling up your battery until it's not needed, cut off, and then your house just runs on the battery. So that's why I like Generac. And so number one on our list, and congratulations to them, is the Tesla Powerwall. Tesla are a phenomenal company, and they've done a phenomenal job pioneering solutions that deal with climate change. Their cars are great. Powerwall is a good product. They, they, you know, they do come out and make really big promises. But then their engineers work really, really hard. And during the year, they've released a new version of the Powerwall. So the capacity is still at that 13.5 kilowatt. It is a lithium MC battery, which, you know, I'd probably prefer the lithium phosphate from what I hear. It's AC coupled, which again, it was built to retrofit to existing systems because I thought that was the most most ready market. It's fairly cost effective. I haven't talked about cost a lot in this video, ranking the top seven. And one of the reasons I haven't is because you find for most of them, most of them are between about $800 and $1,000 per kilowatt hours of storage. So if it's a 10 kilowatt system, you know, it's between 10 kilowatt hour storage battery, home energy storage system, then it's probably between about, you know, $8,000 and $10,000. So all these companies at least seem pretty much in these range. I'm sure if I trolled around and looked at all the 50 other new battery and home energy storage solution providers, there'd be some people offering some lower cost products. But with this sort of thing, I really wouldn't be wanting to go with a company that really didn't have the corporate banking. And we made Tesla number one on our list. You know, Tesla is a large profitable company. The downside of Tesla and the reason I personally would probably buy a Sonnen or a PowerCell rather than a Tesla, I don't really like their model and I don't really like their model in residential solar at all, where the idea is you sign up through a website and then they'll get some contract editor to come and install it, you know, or even maybe their own crews. It's really hard in that model for them to deal with local service. And this is the same with all large corporate solar companies. And to be honest, it's one of the reasons I probably, although Generac have recently had some issues with um, some of the inverter, old Piker inverters they bought as well. I, I feel like that, that company for 50 years it has been supporting backup generators in people's homes. They sort of have a better last mile strategy of getting out and being able to service these products in homes. Tesla's centralized thing I think is gonna lead to a lot of people not feeling like they get the service they need with these products. They'll get sold too efficiently, they will get installed efficiently, probably but whether I'm, I'm still somewhat nervous about that model whether there will actually be the same customer service you would get from a small local solar company and indeed it would be my advice if you want to buy a power wall and at one of my homes I actually have a power wall I would actually buy it not through Tesla directly I would actually buy it through a local solar company because then you've got local service should anything go wrong like a local family owned small or mid-sized solar company would be my advice so there you go who would have thought five years ago that we'd have seven fairly complete and competitive home energy storage offerings on the market, you know, in the range of 800 to 1,000 bucks a kilowatt hour of, of storage capacity. That's all for now. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll make some more. If you're interested more in any of the solutions, I will make some individual reviews for these individual products where I talk about them in a little bit more detail. And there's also some videos going up on our websites of some fireside chats I've had with say Solar Edge and uh, Generac and um, a couple of Canadian solar for instance. Also look out for our 2023 update to our best solar panels coming out soon. Sorry there hasn't been a lot published on our channel this year. We've just been busy with a lot of other things internally so it's good to be back making some content for you and if you're looking at a home battery solution as always solar reviews the great thing about us is we're a conduit to finding you know the best solar companies in America. There's seven or eight hundred you know mainly mid-size or family-owned solar companies around America that you can get quotes on through our site. Almost all of them do one or more of these battery solutions that you can get a quote from and the solar calculator on the front of solarreviews.com if you go to that tell us what your power bill is where you live we'll be able to work out what size of battery solution you need for your home that's all for now have a great day thanks for watching if you enjoyed that video be sure to subscribe and check out our other content